Now let's move on and explore the wonderful properties of a geometric progression. The very first property says that three non-zero terms A, B, C are in GP only and only when the square of the middle term is equal to the product of the first and the third term. The proof of this is extremely simple. Suppose A, B, C are three non-zero terms which are in GP. That would mean what? The ratio of the successive terms is equal to constant. That means B upon A is equal to C upon B equal to some non-zero constant. Yes, that means what? If B upon A equals C upon B, it gives me B squared equals AC, which is what I wanted. Further, suppose A, B, C are some of the three non-zero terms such that B square is same as AC, this means that B into B is equal to A into C, which means B upon A is equal to C upon B. Yes, isn't it? This means what? I can obviously in the next step say that A, B, C are in GP because the ratio of the successive terms is coming out to be equal. So please remember that A, B, C are in A, P when two times the middle term is sum of the first and the third and three non-zero terms are in G, P when square of the middle term is equal to the product of the first and the third term. Got it? Next property says that if ever you want to select three terms which are in GP, the most convenient way to do so is consider them as A by R, A and A, R. In this case, this sequence of three terms will be a GP with common ratio R. If you want to select four terms which are in GP, then choose them to be A by R cube, A by R, A R and A R cube, in which case this sequence of four terms will be a geometric progression with common ratio R square. Similarly, if you want to select any time five terms which are in GP, then the most convenient way to choose them is a by R square, A by R, A, A, R and A, R square, in which case this sequence of five terms will be a GP with again common ratio R. Okay? Now let me jog your memories back to the property of AP which said that in a finite AP, the sum of terms equidistant from the beginning and from the end is the same. In fact, that sum is equal to the sum of the first and the last term of the AP. On the same lines, this property 3 for GP says that in a finite GP, the product of terms equidistant from the beginning and from the end is the same. In fact, it is equal to the product of the first and the last term. Got it? Let's quickly prove this. Let's say this is my GP with common ratio R. I want to prove what? That the product of terms equidistant from the beginning and from the end is equal and equal to the product of the first and the last term. So I am going to consider k to be anything varying from 2 to n minus 1 and I will prove that the product of kth term from the beginning and from the end is equal to the product of the first and the last term. Got it? Okay, kth term from the beginning will look like tk and it will be equal to what? First term into common ratio to the power k minus 1. That means a1 into r to the power k minus 1. What about kth term from the end? Now, this requires some discussion. Let's start. See, first term from the end, first term from the end is actually the nth term from the beginning. Agreed? Second term from the end, second term from the end will be n minus 1th term from the beginning. Right? Third term from the end will be obviously n minus 2th term from the beginning. And so the kth term from the end will be n minus k minus 1th term from the beginning. That means n minus k plus 1th term from the beginning. Okay. So kth term from the end looks like t n minus k plus 1, which is what? First term into r to the power n minus k plus 1 minus 1, that means n minus k. So now I have the expression for the kth term from the beginning and kth term from the end. Let me multiply them. 
Let me multiply them and see what I am getting. Well, a1 into a1 gives me a1 square. r to the power k minus 1 into r to the power n minus k gives me r to the power k minus 1 plus n minus k. k, k cancels out. I am left with n minus 1. Now, allow me to write a1 square as a1 into a1, which in the next step gives me what? a1, which is the first term, and a1 into r to the power n minus 1 is nothing but the nth term. So what am I getting? That the product of kth term from the beginning and kth term from the end is coming out to be a quantity which is independent of k. In fact, it is equal to the product of first and the last term. Hence proved that the product of terms equidistant from the beginning and from the end in a finite GP is equal and equal to the product of first and the last term of that GP. Now the next property says that if you have a GP with you, Okay, and you multiply each of its terms or divide each of its terms by a non-zero real constant, then the resulting sequence will also be a GP, that too with the same common ratio. Yes, let's prove this. Suppose this is the GP that I have. Let's say its common ratio is R. That means the ratio of each of the successive terms of this sequence is equal to the constant R. Or in other words, I can say the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term is equal to R for every n belonging to the set of naturals. Now let's take k to be some non-zero constant and multiply each of the terms of this given sequence with k. I will get the sequence whose first term is k times t1, second term is k times t2, third term is k times t3 and so on. To prove that this sequence is a GP, I will have to prove that the ratio of successive terms is equal to constant. Right? Okay. Or in other words, I have to show that the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term is equal to constant for every n belonging to the set of naturals. That's what I have to show. Right? So let's consider the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of this new sequence. Okay? Of this new sequence. What is the n plus 1th term? Well, please realize the first term is k times the first term of the given sequence. The second term is k times the second term of the given sequence. The third term is k times the third term of the given sequence. So the n plus 1th term will be k times the n plus 1th term of the given sequence. And nth term will be k times the nth term of the given sequence. K is non-zero, I can cancel it out. I'm left with Tn plus 1 upon Tn, which is the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of the given sequence, which is equal to R, I know, for every n belonging to the set of naturals. And therefore, I am getting that the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of this new sequence is equal to the constant R. And hence, my new sequence is also a GP with the same common ratio. Got it? Okay, then time for the next property. In here it says that if you have a GP with you and you decide to raise each term of that GP to the power of the same non-zero quantity, then the resulting sequence is also a GP. To put it simply, if you raise each term of a GP to the same power, the resulting sequence is also a GP. Let's prove this. Suppose this is the given sequence, which is a GP with common ratio R. That means the ratio of each of the successive terms is equal to the constant r or in other words, the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of the sequence is equal to r for every n belonging to the set of naturals. Okay, suppose k is some non-zero real number. Now, if I raise each of the term of this given GP to the power k, I am going to get this new sequence whose first term is t1 raised to the power k Second term is t2 raised to the power k. Third term is t3 raised to the power k and so on. To prove that this new sequence is a GP, I will have to prove that the ratio of successive terms is a constant. Or in other words, I will have to show that the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of this new sequence is a constant for every n belonging to the set of naturals. Right? Now let's consider the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of this new sequence. Realize one thing, the first term of the new sequence is first term of the given sequence raised to the power k. 
The second term of the new sequence is second term of the given sequence raised to the power k. That means the n plus 1th term of the new sequence will be equal to n plus 1th term of the given sequence raised to the power k and nth term of the new sequence will be nth term of the given sequence raised to the power k. This gives you what? Tn plus 1 upon Tn whole raised to the power k. What is the ratio of n plus 1th term and the nth term? It is equal to r, isn't it? Yes, so you get r to the power k. r is a constant, k is a constant, r to the power k is also a constant. Yes, so you have successfully obtained that the ratio of the n plus 1th term and the nth term of this new sequence is equal to a constant for every n belonging to the set of naturals. Got it? So what are you getting? What are you getting? That when you have a GP with you and you raise each of the term of that GP to the power of the same non-zero quantity, the resulting sequence is also a GP. If the given GP is of common ratio R, the new GP is of common ratio R to the power K, where K represents that quantity to which you have raised the power. Got it? Now the next property says that the product of two GPs or the quotient of two GPs is also a GP. What is the meaning of this? Let's understand. Suppose I have two GPs with me. First is A1, A2, A3 and so on. Second is B1, B2, B3 and so on. I decide to multiply the first term of both the GPs. I will get A1, B1. Then when I multiply the second term of both the GPs, I get A2, B2. I multiply the third term of both the GPs, I get A3, B3 and so on. This new sequence which I created by multiplying the corresponding terms of the two given GPs is actually the product of the two given GPs which is also a GP. Okay, that is the meaning of product of two GPs is a GP. Now, similarly, exactly on the same lines, now, let me take the quotient of the first terms of both the GPs. I will get A1 upon B1. When I take the quotient of the second terms of both the GPs, I will get A2 upon B2. When I take the quotient of the third terms of both the GPs, I will get A3 upon B3 and so on. This new sequence which I created by taking quotient of the corresponding terms of both these GPs, what I get is actually the quotient of the two given GPs, which is also a GP. That is the meaning of quotient of two GPs is a GP. So keep in mind the product of two GPs or quotient of two GPs also gives you a sequence which is a GP. Time for the last property. Here it says that if A1, A2, A3 and so on is a GP of not just non-zero terms, but in fact, of positive terms to be precise so that their logarithm is defined then log a1 log a2 log a3 and so on is an arithmetic progression in fact this is both ways true what i'm trying to say is that if a1 a2 a3 and so on is a gp of positive terms then log a1 log a2 log a3 and so on is an arithmetic progression also, if log a1, log a2, log a3 and so on is an arithmetic progression, then a1, a2, a3 and so on will be a GP of positive terms. To convince you on this result, let's perform this example. In here, I have a sequence. As you can see, it's consisting all of positive terms. This sequence is actually a geometric progression. It's pretty simple for, I to, for you to identify. 4 upon 2 is 2, 8 upon 4 is 2 and so on. So the ratio of each of the successive terms is coming out to be equal to the constant 2. That means this given sequence is definitely a GP with common ratio 2. What I have to show? I have to show that its corresponding log sequence is an AP. Yes, that means log 2, comma log 4, comma log 8, comma and so on, log 128 is an arithmetic progression is what I want to show because when I show this, this will establish my result, right, my property. So let's see, log 2 is the first term, log 4 is the second term which I can rewrite as log 2 square, log 8 is the third term which I can rewrite as log 2 cube, log 128 is the last term which I can rewrite as log 2 to the power 7. So that means I have to show this sequence to be an arithmetic progression. Now tell me one thing which is very, very basic, very fundamental. If I have a sequence and I show that each of the three consecutive terms of that sequence are in AP, then that would imply that the complete sequence is an AP, isn't it? In here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. 
First of all, I am going to focus on the first term, second term and the third term and prove that these three terms are actually in AP. Once this is shown, then I will show that second term, third term, fourth term, these three terms are in AP. Then I will show third term, fourth term, fifth term, these three terms are in AP and so on. Okay, so let's see how I show the first three terms are in AP. I know three terms are in AP when two times the middle term is sum of the first and the third term. Now, two times the middle term, that means two times log two square. This gives me what? Log of two to the power four. So two times the middle term is coming out to be log of two to the power four. Sum of the first and the third term is coming out to be log two plus log two cube, isn't it? Log m plus log n is log of m into n, which is log of two into two cube, which is again log two to the power four. So you are getting two times the middle term is sum of the first and the third term. That means the first three terms of the sequence are definitely in AP. Similarly, it's very, very easy for you to show that the next three terms are in AP, further next are in AP and so on. And bingo, we have proved that the given sequence, this one, is actually an arithmetic progression. Okay, so you have to keep this in mind that whenever you have a sequence A1, A2, A3 and so on, which is a GP of positive terms and the corresponding log sequence will be an arithmetic progression and vice versa. Cool?